Hello, I'm Christina Raab, Vice President of Strategy and Development for the Cradle to Cradle Products Innovation Institute. Today, I'm delighted to welcome Ron Gornan, founder and CEO of Closed Loop Partners, a New York-based investment firm comprised of venture capital, gross equity, private equity, project finance, and an innovation center focused on building the circular economy. Ron is also the author of the new book, The Waste-Free World, How the Circular Economy Will Take Less, Make More, and Save the Planet, published by Penguin Random House. Welcome, Ron. Glad to be here. Ron, in the Waste Free World book, you describe your time working as Deputy Commissioner of Sanitation, Recycling and Sustainability for the city of New York. You had a front row seat to the collection and processing of the city's waste, as well as public policy. What did this experience teach you about our current systems? It taught me a few things. Uh, first is how unaware most Americans are of the cost related to not recycling. We tend to be marketed to that uh, recycling is the right thing to do solely because it's good for the environment. It is good for the environment, but it's also good for our pocketbooks and our wallets because whenever you recycle, you avoid the cost of sending waste to landfill. And that was the first thing I recognized was that most people, both uh, as citizens or even people in the administration, never counted the cost of landfills in the value of recycling. So that was uh, a very important recognition that I think I had early on and really focused a lot of our communications on making people aware of, of that, no matter what we were trying to develop and implement. And it is widely recognized that policy and finance are the two biggest levers of change for scaling a circular economy. Uh, we have seen an uptick in engagement from the financial sector during the past five years as leading investment firms bring ESG to the forefront of their strategies. How close are we seeing impact and innovation investing becoming mainstream? And where is the tipping point in your point of view? The good news is we're at the early stages of a tipping point. We're not at the tipping point yet, but we are at the early stages of the tipping point, which is exciting for us as investors because it means that there's going to be a lot of disruption and innovation and opportunity for uh, returns for those focused on impact in the coming years because that, that tipping point, that shift is really starting to happen in a momentous way. And where do you see the most important opportunities for growing sustainable finance? And where can impact and innovation investing have the biggest influence? I think the greatest opportunity is actually in comparison to non-impact focused companies or non-impact focused portfolios. I think that there's been a serious misunderstanding. If I'm being... Uh, hopeful. If I'm being pessimistic, it was a hoax uh, during the past few decades that not focusing on impact is how you drive returns. If you just focus on the bottom line, so to speak, that's what's going to maximize returns. If you focus on anything else, uh, whether it be the environment, your employees, uh, your uh, things r related to social causes in the areas in which you work, that somehow that's going to create a discount. And the data disproves that. It actually shows something completely different. It shows that if you do focus on those things, that's where you're going to maximize returns. And if you don't focus on those things, that's how you put yourself at the greatest risk for uh, scandal, uh, things going on at the company you're not aware of, uh, lawsuits, loss of customers, so on and so forth. Uh, and so that's where I think the biggest opportunity is, is to actually put the impact companies and impact, impact portfolios in a competitive way next to the ones that aren't in order to demonstrate that that should really be the central way of investing. Mm -hmm. And how do you measure the impact for investments focused on social and environmental progress? How does the definition of return on investment change? I, I, the, the important word that I would use 
to answer that question would be transparency. The most we should expect from a company is for them to be transparent about the materials they're using and where they come from, the type of labor they're using and how they're treated and, and, and paid, uh, the impact of their product on the environment, what happens to their product at the end of life. And if the expectation is that companies are fully transparent about that, then customers can make informed choices. And I'm confident that most customers being given full information would actually choose products that are better for their health or better for their families or better for their communities. Or another way to think of it is they're not going to buy companies that uh, communicate that they're using uh, chemicals or processes that are harmful to our health, our environment and our, our communities. And if we set transparency as the core expectation, that will naturally shift the market towards better aligning with the interest of consumers and taxpayers. And the scaling circular economy practices is widely hailed as the solution to our current production and consumption challenges. In your book, you painted a picture of a fully circular world. Yet in reality, the world is struggling to shift even some of the most basic patterns of consumption. How do we break out of this cycle of take, make, waste once and for all? What do we need and what do you think will it take? The fastest way to accelerate the circular economy would be to end a system that we've been operating under for the past 75 years where companies are not responsible for what happens to their product or package at the end of its life. That responsibility and oftentimes the cost associated with that responsibility is spread across the taxpayer base. And that type of system enables companies to not really worry about the impact and effect that their product or packaging may be having. That's uh, a cost that is going to be borne by uh, the taxpayer. And that's, it's not fair. It's not equitable. It's actually not free market or capitalist at all. It's effectively saying uh, we'll have a free market propped up by you know, public subsidies. And so I think if you can graduate to a system in which we say, if you're putting out a product or a package, it's easily recyclable, has value in the recycling system, we should reward and recognize those companies. Companies that are putting products and packaging into the market that are not recyclable or have no value, and someone needs to pay to send to a landfill, that payment shouldn't come from taxpayers. That payment should come from that company. And that realization of the true cost and they're assuming that responsibility will force them to innovate and use uh, products that are more circular, more sustainable. Well, thank you, Juan, for inspiring us with your new book and for sharing your insights in this 5 in 10 interview conversation. Thank you for having me.